Since opening the learning programme in 2009, we've had over 35,000 participants that have come here and enjoyed free access, they've enjoyed workshops, they've enjoyed being in the nature and in the environment. The learning programme's mission was to have every child in Scotland visit and or benefit from an experience of Jupiter Outland. What's the story so far? Have you been reading the story? Dig up gold, I think. Edinburgh Napier and Jupiter Outland have been working in partnership for seven years since 2009. The Minecraft project started um, working with uh, the fantastic team of Tom and Arga. So Tom is lecturer for the Centre for Interactive Design at Edinburgh Napier University and he's been uh, involved in a lot of our digital outreach. He basically had this fantastic idea to do uh, Jupiter Outland through Minecraft. They know what they're doing with terms of space and actually in terms of the real world. And have we got our tablets? I believe that there's another layer right on top of that world, which is a virtual layer, and we look at how we can hide things in the digital in the digital realm, how we can make things happen, because there's so much technology happening now, things like location-based technology, that we can actually start building things for it, and we've got little phones with little worlds in them, we can make little hidden places which don't really affect the day-to-day -day of Jupiter Island. So for us, it's, it's a really brilliant playground to actually do research in. Jupiter Artland in Minecraft was my internship. We tried to recreate uh, this beautiful place in Minecraft and make it more interactive, make it something uh, which children gonna will, will be able to use later on. The Amethyst Crystal Cave is made out of obsidian at the top of the sculpture. So as soon as you say the word obsidian, every kid goes, that's in Minecraft, that's in Minecraft. So I thought that was a really exciting prospects I already know that children are engaged with it. We felt that this wonderful place which is like a journey, it is like a journey of discovery and it has its landmarks on, on the landscape, could easily be translated into the Minecraft dimension. We had to use uh, well maps, surveys, uh, GPS tracking uh, footage as well. On top of that I used customizations just to recreate uh, um, this wild nature of the of the place. The first time Argus showed me Minecraft, I just thought it was amazing. Cause even though it's all blocky, it really captures the feeling of it. Because we are in, in the middle of the countryside and quite close to Highlands, I thought uh, traditional Scottish fairy tales would be a nice one. Uh, so we presented typical characters from all of the traditional Scottish fairy tales to, to children. We went into groups and we all drew our own one and they chose which ones they would like and so these are some of the ones, well these are all of them. Yeah. Tom and Alga again had this great idea to do a kind of mixed reality game and this would be for our launch. So it was, not, it was an opportunity for us to link up with the Science Festival, something Jeep Troutland has never done before. Today we had 20 children here testing the game. They were very stimulated, very red in the face running around quite so much. It was great, lots of exercise. We're really happy, I suppose, that this is just another uh, facet to the digital work that we're doing with many different groups. And it's really about, it's about the access to contemporary art for children and young people and um, engaging people that probably wouldn't necessarily take much interest in contemporary art. Memory, go to there. Go to In Memory, yeah, go to the In Memory. This project is a mixed reality game and it's a story that's told both in the real world and on Minecraft. We've got children in Minecraft guiding children in the real world. The children in Minecraft can see where all the clues are hidden. The children in the real world can't but they're being sent to find them. They have an application on a tablet which once they've found the treasure will then give them more clues and new clues and open up the story to them. So the children in Minecraft and the children in the real world have to cooperate to be able to this find these. And at the end of it, there is treasure. But the only way they can find the treasure is by exposing the whole nuances of the story, understanding what each character wants, how to help them. And eventually, they will find the treasure at the end of the game. No, Robin, come here, no! Robin! I know what it is! I know what it is! I just there was a lot of chat, actually, in our original meetings about what treasure they were finding. But actually, being invited to be involved with using this software to really cutting edge was 
was almost the reward enough. You know, we did fr frame it like, you guys are helping us, you know, we need to test this, we want your feedback. So we decided simply for them to just have... Oh, I don't know who to give it to. The age-old reward of chocolate. The treasure. The treasure. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Because I study interactive media design, I'm interested in mixed uh, media storytelling. So all of these elements we use, Minecraft, uh, mobile applications, in the future we're going to connect that to beacons. So this idea of having a mixed reality game it's just one way that we can work with it and now we can look at engaging people and it seems to be really successful, it seems to really engage the children, it seems to really engage the public and this is where we get excited and we're just looking forward to doing more and more work. With Minecraft I think it's, I think because we are an open outdoor space it is, it again has really worked very successfully with that and I think Tom has got another mad idea up his sleeve. It's going to launch fully in April. Tell me, Rebecca. Rebecca! And, and Jupiter will be firmly in the Minecraft sphere. Okay, okay off you go.